Hello everyone. Here we are again. I do hope you've had a good week. Well, <clears throat> as best as you can at present. But we do have to try and keep as positive as we can, don't we? And it's not so easy avoiding the news or those special TV or radio reports with experts. It's so difficult to do that. I do know that some people do avoid them on purpose as they get so depressed. But we do have to keep up with developments. How do we keep positive thoughts? Many people have a lot to say about this. And if we look out there, there are lots of outlets of how we can do it, either in books or online or social media. I think it's good to have friends who you can trust and can talk to honestly with confidence. Even though we cannot meet with friends socially, there's so much we can do, just as we're doing with church while we're in lockdown and on those numerous meetings that we seem to have. I suppose social media does have advantages. Talking can be very positive. Another good place to start is the Bible. And I'm sure regular listeners will realise that many of my talks are based around where the Bible's helped me. Now, as you may know, we've started a new group within our parishes. We're reading the whole of the Bible in a year and talks this week have been based on it, haven't they? You'll have picked up some good reflections on the book of Job. Some of them, well, I think all of them have been very good. But you know, last week I felt I was drowning in that book of the Bible. It's not so familiar to me, but the more I've read it in the week that's gone, I've come to realise that it has relevance to our worries and concerns today. At its beginning, Job, Job seems to be a book about human suffering. By its conclusion, the true subject of the book emerges, and that is God's sovereignty. <laughs> but there's a great deal in between from chapter 1 to 42. Going back to my introduction, there's a connection there that Job had friends who talked to him, or rather had discussions about his suffering and so on. From chapter 4 to 31, Job conversed with his three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, about the meaning of suffering. The upshot of it all was that the theory of his friends perhaps was unsatisfactory. But the part of Job I want to reflect on today is quite near the end of the book. I'm going to concentrate on chapters 35, 36 and 37, where another friend, Elihu, he comes in with his third speech after Job asked, what's the point of being good? What do I gain by not sinning? Elihu suggests that nothing at all is gained by sinning or not sinning. You only have to look up at the heavens and the clouds to realise that God is so much higher than us, that none of our actions can affect him for good or ill. Well, you see, Elihu is falling back into the old argument we heard earlier from Eliphaz. Job had complained that God doesn't answer him. And though Elihu had previously said that God does speak, he now gives three quick reasons why prayer is not answers, answered. He said it could be pride, wrong motives and lack of faith. But Job does not believe this. He just doesn't understand why God does certain things that cause suffering. Just as I'm sure we're all questioning today. Can we find answers from Job? As I was reading on, 
One verse jumped out to me in chapter 35. Verse 10. It's a verse of beauty, of grace and comfort. Where is my God and maker who gives songs in the night? I love that phrase, songs in the night. Who teaches us more than he teaches the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the sky. I thought this was a phrase of great comfort and hope for all people, searching for a hand in the darkness of their night. It doesn't have to be the middle of the night either. We can feel in a dark place at any time. Creator God can provide songs to sing in all circumstances. And it's surely our prayer that he will give us the grace to know him in the darknesses we face, so that we indeed may be able to sing the songs he gives to us with a joy that sustains us through our night times. As we read on, Elihu speaks about the thunder and the lightning and how they are a work of God's creation. And then he tells us, but at these things my heart trembles and skips a beat. He tells Job to listen attentively to the thunder and the feeling the rumbling of the ground at the rumbling of the ground when it happens. This is, of course, an act of God, and through it he speaks. All of creation speaks of God's glory. And if we look closely, we can see him in all that he has created. We actually started this reading project with creation at the beginning of Genesis. Elihu tells us to observe God's thunder, feel the rumble of the thunder, how it shakes the earth. Look at the lightning that reaches to the ends of the earth. He goes on, look at the snow that God allows to fall on the earth. Look at the rain, both gentle and heavy. God sends them at his own choosing. Look at how God freezes or seals the water in its place. Look how God has filled the clouds with water. Look at how the clouds are directed by the hand to God to go where he chooses. Later on in that chapter, Elihu calls on Job to pay special attention to what he's about to say. And he asks Job, stand still, consider the works of God. Good advice. In this busy world, well, in normal times, there's not much effort made by many of us to stand still. Usually we tend to have a really full diary. Perhaps we feel important because our calendars and diaries are full. But I know those times have disappeared and we have different dates in our diaries, don't we? To consider, but do we factor in some standstill time to consider the wondrous works of God? Even though we're doing lots of reading and meetings on Zoom. We do have to stand still, don't we? Here again, Elihu asks Job a series of questions about creation and nature. He asks, do you know when God sends forth his clouds? Or do you know the schedule when God causes lightning to come from his clouds? And he says, Job, since you have so much knowledge, teach us what to say to him for we can say nothing because we're still in darkness we have limited understanding he continues who am i to speak with god i have limited knowledge and understanding if i were to speak i would be swallowed up who is man that god is mindful of him who is man that he thinks he can debate with god when we think of the greatness of God, who could stand in his presence? Who can see the face of God and survive? 
Only by the grace of God are we allowed to stand in his presence. It is only by God's invitation that any of us can walk into his presence. And so now we hear, don't we, how Elihu points us up to God. He has taken us through an exploration of God's power and a meditation on the greatness of God through the storm to his conclusion at the end of chapter 37. We're coming to the end of the book and it's taking a different turn. So this is the conclusion at the end of that chapter. Therefore people revere him, for does he not have regard for all the wise in his heart? Well, I'm going to end my reflection here on those words. We can look forward to the last few chapters of Job in future reflections, I hope. But just a final thought to hold on to, and maybe you can make your own conclusion. So is this the truth? Job never received an answer as to why he suffered earlier on in the book. But more importantly, he received a deeper understanding of who God is. Quite a thought to ponder. Let us now pray. Lord, we come to you now in prayer. We tell you of our needs, our worries for ourselves and for the whole world at this time. But Lord, help us to listen as well as to plead. Help us in all our relationships, but especially with you, Lord. Help us to find you in all places. Help us to know you through your creation and hear your song in the night and ask for help, as Job was encouraged. Lord, comfort us in our darkness and suffering. And perhaps help us understand why there is suffering in the world. But we know that you are Lord and Lord of all, and put our trust in you. Amen. So, for today, thank you for listening. It's good to listen, as well as to talk. So please take care. Look after yourselves, especially as we hear the news in our town of Warrington that isn't so good at the moment. So keep and keep listening. God bless. Bye.